So we flew across the country all the way to Centurion Boats right here in California. And today is gonna to be an awesome episode because we get to watch how one of the nicest boats in the world is made from the very first step, so nothing, all the way till going to the customer. Yeah, what Brad meant to say is the nicest boat on the planet. And they've built some crazy one-off stuff for our boat that maybe in 2024, they might get a seat. Let's go check it out. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amy Mozzie and I'm with Centurion Boats and today we're going to start to go through the process of building a Centurion from the very, very beginning all the way through to that final perfect finish. Let's check it out. How many boats would you say are here? On the premise, we probably have 50 that are in process. <laughs> Um, 50 see boats. Some boats. I want to start at the very beginning stage. Yep. I don't want to look at too much. I just, the most important thing is see, all right, boat is nothing. What, what makes it a hole, you know, look uh -huh. like a boat. And then what are the different processes? So that's what we're doing right now. We're walking all the way to the first building. Yeah, as you, these are all, these look like all different molds. So let's go to the first building and I want to see how the boat is made. So what is building number one? Where are we going? Building number one is mold prep. Right. This is the beginning of the process and probably one of the most instrumental steps in the boat building process. If we screw this up, you're going to see it on the exterior of the boat. <laughs> so we don't want right. to screw yeah, this yeah. up. Yeah, this, yeah. This, it already smells good. So safety third, here we go. All right, Aim sir, where are we at here? We are in mold prep. So mold prep, like I said, is probably the most important part of the process. It, it may not look like it now because there's not an actual boat in here. We haven't made one yet. But really, if we don't condition the mold properly, you'll see any blemish that's in the mold transferred to the exterior of the boat. And that's a problem because then it'll need to be fixed after the fact and it'll need to be fixed after the fact on every single part yeah. that's pulled out of that mold. So it really makes sense for us to take extra time here. So between a turn, every time we use a mold, we wax it. But before a mold is introduced into production, we wax it 17 times. And that's wax on, wax off, Wax on, right hand. Wax off, left hand. 17 times. How come you do that? Well, because the molds are so big, there's probably so much pressure that you want it to pop Absolutely. off. Absolutely. You know, wow. In other yeah. words, is they cannot make a mistake. Because if they make a mistake, one little imperfection on this big yeah. boat right here is bad. Let's go check out these huge molds. Yeah. <laughs> Our new pool. <laughs> So they're gel coating here, and I'm gonna crack this. There's a lot of overspray. Holy a lot cow! Of look at that. And then you look at how, how, what the gap between that top of that hull mold and the ceiling. That's all they've got. So they've already sprayed the base color on this boat. This is a drive scheme. Uh, they've already sprayed the base, which is black, and they are now spraying metal flake. It's champagne metal flake that they're spraying on this boat. Yes. That he doesn't show wild. And so they're hanging into the boat and taping upside down and backwards, essentially. He is having to hand tape the complete pattern into this boat. Mask everything off that's gonna be a different color, spray it, then he's gotta reverse do the whole color again. That just, just in labor. Eh. I the had labor no idea. I, I honestly had no idea that 
the process was done like that. That is wow. So this is gonna be building number two and what's happening in here? This is lamination. lamination. So this is where we add the structural fiberglass to the boat. Okay. Up to this point, we've only sprayed color into a mold. Sweet. Hear the music? This is wild. You can see it if you go up a little closer to the boat is they've already done what we call the skin coat. And the skin coat is chopped fiberglass mixed with resin and then they spray it on and they roll it out in every crevice, corner, and they make sure it's very, very consistent. That skin coat, we call it the perfect coat because it allows the gel coat to shine more consistently, which is so ironic. You know, people will ask, do you guys use chop? Do you use hand laid? Well, we do both. And the reason being is because each of them has a really specific purpose. The chop makes that specific shine that we have on the exterior of the boat, that consistent look because of all the various ways that the fiberglass strands go down, it creates strength, but it also creates a consistency of look on the exterior. Then you add the engineered cloth, which gives it more structure. And so what you'll see here is they put different types of engineered cloth in different oh, yeah, layers I, I can see the, in the, different areas. It's like thick and then real yep. fine. And they'll also laminate um, aluminum into the deck where we introduce things like the tower. Oh, okay. um, so there's added structure. So you'll have a piece of aluminum that's between multiple layers of fiberglass. And that's gonna be a high stress point on the deck. We wanna make sure it's secure. So as they're doing the two different pieces to the boat, he's also shooting all the little parts. So this is like the swim deck, or like the parts of the tower, a bunch of different things in between. And every single one of these molds get the same treatment that the actual top and bottom of the boat gets. So all the fiberglass, the chopper gun fiberglass, the strength, strength mats, everything that they're doing. I had no idea that the boat was fully done by hand like this. I mean, I know that they pride themselves on saying, you know, USA made, but this is the definition of USA made. This is craftsmanship, and this is an unbelievable process, and I have never seen anything like it, ever. This part is really, really nasty, <laughs> because it's, it, this is pull and grind. So they're, they're pulling the boat out of the mold, and then grinding off all of the jagged edges of the flange. And you know how you love grinding so this fiberglass. Well, we can just peek in real quick. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh my God. Wow, yeah, that's dusty. They've ground off, and you can you can even run your finger out. They've yeah. ground off all the edges, the extra flange, and this is what pops out of that deck mold. We've got the holes inside because they're putting underwater gear on them. Wow. What's yeah. really amazing is that the color is done first, yeah. the gel coat. Isn't that true? I mean, all the stuff that could just mess this whole outside up, <laughs> look how perfect it is yeah. after everything we just walked through. We also rhino line the inside of the hull and the bilge area of the boat. It used to be back in the day they would um, put carpet inside, even carpet that you couldn't see. One, it would dampen the noise. Two, it would make the storage area more consistent looking. Uh, now we have a whole booth where we rhino line the inside so you don't have to deal with the musty smell of yeah. carpet after yeah, a while. Yeah, if it gets wet or something. Yeah. They're, they're using a flipper, so they're gonna turn this hull over, then they're gonna get on top of it, and they're gonna introduce any of the, basically the through holes that need to go into the bottom of the boat. Holy cow, I, you know, there's so many processes. So what they're doing now is they're, pu they're putting together anything on the boat that needs bolted that they could easily do right now. So they have it on a big rotisserie and it's going, they're gonna flip the entire boat and bolt in say like the hook, any of the things that go on the bottom of the boat, all that before it's to the next step. And it also is, if you see right here, it's fully already rhino lined too. So they rhino line the whole inside of the boat after all the steps we just saw. It's just, there's a lot of steps. <laughs> so this is one of the cutting a piece out. Look how thick it is. From what we were just, look at the layers. It's almost a three quarter, probably one inch thick. Yeah. Might keep that for memories. So you see all the white 
basically round holes inside this boat. Well, what those are is the pieces of the boat that are essentially kind of hollow. They they film with foam and it acts as more of a float. And uh, they said, you know, when a, when a boat is over 20 feet as a manufacturer, technically they don't have to do that, but they still do it to every one of their boats. It's cool just to see all the, I mean, there's foam, there's fiberglass, they put aluminum in the boat, the rhino line. There's a lot. There's a lot more that goes into this hull than I even thought. I thought it was just a quick, easy... Oh, I wonder if these are up. I mean, this, this, is, uh, this is a lot of handmade work. This is wild. So when you look at the thickness of this hull, there's other areas where it's even thicker than this. So to get that thickness, literally, they're putting fiberglass on one little layer at a time. And look how thick, I mean, that just blows my mind. Yeah. Oh! Oh! <laughs> that looked a little too close to me. I would not want to be in charge of doing that. <laughs> you guys are wild. You guys had Red Bull today, huh? Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. So that's oh the cutout for God. the ram fill scoop. Man, so that's the ram. That's all the way that's down. That's the cutout for the ram fill scoop. Yeah. So that's, Man, that's how probably thick a good it five is pounds. on the keel. On the Man, delta pad of the boat. So with the color, all the fiberglass, the the rhino line. I mean, that becomes pretty heavy. Oh yeah. So out here, they, we've got a test lake where they, they actually water test each and every boat that goes to the factory after it goes through basically almost final production. And you can look at the boat, it's got, got most of the stuff in it, interiors in it. I don't think it has flooring usually in them, but what they'll do is take them and drop them in this lake and run it through the lake back and forth. And they'll test all the systems of the boat, the engine, the ballast systems, all the electrical systems operations to make sure that stuff is dialed in before it, it makes its way to the customer. Everything from plate actuation to steering to stereo operation, the engine, a ballast, you name it, and every boat is lake tested. And if there is a problem identified, they will fix it here if they can, or if it's a catastrophic problem for one reason or another, they'll take it back down the street and do what they need to do. Oh! Paco, don't scare me! <laughs> <laughs> so they test every single boat. I don't know why I'm still wearing the safety glasses. <laughs> they still, they test every boat. He says he has to go wide open, like do everything that the boat would do in, in an actual lake. But so, yeah, I mean, it's very tight. Look at how close it is here. I'd be like freaking out. So he fills the ballast and everything. Yeah. Checks every single thing. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll watch him run up and down a little bit and then we'll keep going through the process. But this is uh, obviously skipped a bunch of steps, but we were, we were walking this way anyway. So it's kind of cool just to see what's going on. So one, one of my favorite things is uh, we're, we're still in the process of going to look at the boat and, and all the, everything that's happening, but probably one of the coolest things is we, we got called in here and every Tuesday they do a Bible study. And uh, just, you know, anyone that, that, you know, any employees, anyone around that want to kind of come and just kind of talk about maybe someone's going through something or, or anything like that. We, we wrote a verse today and uh, talked, uh, we watched a little show. Um, actually, one of the Duck Dynasty guys uh, talked about, you know, his faith and stuff. And it's just kind of cool because they're just, they're very, you know, based around, you know, the glory of God. That's that's their whole thing here is, is that, you know, they, they build boats to the highest extent and also follow, you know, a, a lot of the guidelines of, of following the Lord and, and just bringing people around and lifting everyone up. So I've never been invited at a company to a Bible study. When they asked me that, I was like... What? That is awesome. So anyway, we're leaving the Bible study. Got to meet a lot of awesome guys. Now is the time. Dun, dun, dun. We get to go check out our boat. <laughs> we get to go check out our boat right now here in just a, a few seconds. And the other thing is, is the interior guy was in here. He's all, yeah, I just sewed up your seats and everything. So we get to go watch them hand make a bunch of different things and see everything I can't tell you guys a bunch of the stuff that they did because they won't tell me so let's go check it out so I don't know where we're at but it smells really good in here I'm assuming this is like the, the finishing style Amy where are we right now we are in pre-detail so what they're doing in here is they 
even though they bring the deck and the hull kind of stacked on one another down the street, that's really just for transport at this point. They separate them when they come into here. And what these guys do is they'll buff both the deck and the hull to a really, really high shine everywhere. Even on the seat bases, as you can have to see them doing here. Oh, wow. Which, on the seat bases, you're going to get upholstery on that. You're technically not going to see that. But they're buffing it to a high shine so they can identify any imperfection and they're going to fix it right now. And the reason they do this at this stage, which is kind of an extra process for most manufacturers, is so that we're not trying to make these fixes once the interior is already in the boat. Man, this guy chose some interesting colors, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this guy chose pink, blue, and green. Man, we that's are gonna be custom a boat manufacturer. Hopefully, they that's never have to say. resell it. That might be hard. <laughs> So we are leaving oh. the final uh, kind of process of them making sure there's no imperfections. And now we're going straight to assembly. So we're gonna start seeing, you know, I, I'm imagining different wire harnesses, maybe motors and boats, things like that. So let's go to the next building. Oh, wow. This is line one. This is where the boat comes inside our main manufacturing area. And you can see we separate the deck and the hull again. And then essentially we start adding everything to it. You add everything from wiring to ballast hose to more external fittings, our quick surf plate, our silent stinger. Now is our boat in this facility? It is. In fact, we're coming up on it here in just a couple boats. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Are you so I know we touched on it. We, we touched on it in the beginning, but our boat is uh, in this assembly line and our boat has a lot, a lot of special features that they have not shared with me. In fact, Shane, is uh, he's been in charge with a lot of the features, which it, we'll talk to him in a minute. A lot of custom features that aren't gonna be in a lot of the other boats. So, oh, I need to wear these. <laughs> Let's go. So Shane here, he's not told me what's, what we're gonna look at. Is there any hints you can give me or anything? Uh, it's it's definitely uh, something to be excited on. I say that. <laughs> Shane, he's been so Brand, secretive. Brandon and Amy have been part of the journey on this, and it's kind of fun working and collaborating with the team and getting everybody's input and doing something a little bit different on a production boat. And uh, hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Oh, I can't uh, wait. So, they've all done some really cool features that they're won't tell me about uh, but obviously when I see them Shane will be able to explain a little more in depth and let everyone know you know why is it so different than what's on all the other boats all right so I think we're walking up to it here it is oh my god oh here she is look at this beautiful piece Oh my gosh, look at all the stuff that they're putting in there. Look at all the valves and yep. you know it's just crazy to think that this is gonna be a complete boat. I I have yet to see what like all the interior and everything looks like, but as it sits, this is our boat right here. Like our boat. Isn't it and weird? It's all black, baby. All black. Look at all these lights. Hey, isn't it crazy? Hey, see? look at those. Well, just from the stages we were just looking at to this is insane. You know what's gonna be fun? The is the wrap design. Those are 10,000 lumens of each each one. So each side. 10,000 lumens? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you can change colors on it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so we saw the bottom part to our boat. Now this is the full top part to the boat. And as you can see, we chose all black. That way it's just, we just love all black. But we are gonna do a cool graphic and it's a lot easier to wrap something that's all black. But you can tell everything's pre-wired. Amy, show us what we got here. Yeah, so essentially this is one of the main reasons why we keep the deck and the hull separate throughout this process so that we can run all the wiring, the ballast hose, neatly, precisely to make sure everything's hooked up properly and it's gonna work properly. But if there's something that needs to be diagnosed down the road, we know that it's clean and we can get to it. 
Also, wow. you're gonna see that same level of attention to detail here when they start to assemble the amp boards and add those in. They'll also put the battery management system in at this stage. But it, this makes sure that we can access every piece of the boat that we need to, so everything is where it should be. <laughs> the detail that, that's a lot of work, huh? Yeah. 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 I've seen your videos. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, yeah, all black. So this is the all hex right here. Yeah, that looks awesome. Yeah, it's... And yeah. then this is a different different material here, right? So you have yep. a two-tone material. Yep. So right after station three, you can see station three harness install. Right after that, this is where they saw installed the engines. And you can see how big the motors are. <laughs> so we'll top up here. So that's a full motor install. That's a big boy motor right there. 150 horsepower, uh, 5.3 liters. Naturally aspirated? Yeah. yeah. Nice. So 450 horsepower, all <laughs> naturally aspirated. That's, that's something you'd put in like a race car. <laughs> all I know is Brandon told me there's a, a very custom stitch pattern that no other boat's gonna have. And there's a lot of other little goodies, but he won't tell me what the other things are. So we're about to walk up to it right now for the first time and check it out. Oh, hold on, whoa, 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 oh, no, no, look, don't look. You gotta be kidding me. I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> yeah. I saw it. Oh, my God. It. You saw it? Yeah. Don't look, look at me. I can't. No, look don't at look. me. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna crap your pants. I wanna look. All right. Don't look, because I accidentally <laughs> seen it. Well, you don't look. <laughs> you know, I accidentally seen it. Well, right. James would be guiding us. Oh, God. <laughs> no way. Dude. Holy cow, look at this too. That is sick. Dang. Amy. That was a team effort. Everyone. Oh my god. I was gonna say that's a team effort. Hey, and the stitching also. Notice the stitching too. Oh my god. I want my house furniture like this. This is sick. So this whole stitch, oh my god. Look, look at the seat. Oh my god. That. Does this change color too? Yeah. Yeah. That'll be RGBW. Oh, that's machine. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, built. Wow. That's freaking awesome. I want to hug you right now. <laughs> wow. So this is special. No one else has this stitching. Not one boat in this whole facility, and they're not going to do it. The whole goal is we might be working together to come out with a package that one day maybe people could order. But this. I can't wait till this gets inside the boat. Holy cow! Dude. So he he did uh, he did the seats. Yeah. You were putting them together. Was it way different than all the seats you normally do? Yeah, but the big old it has a big old logo. We usually use this small, small, smaller one, so I had to rethink about different ways how to do it. That Took me some time. That looks but, amazing. Yeah. Like right now, I'm doing one right now over there with the smaller logo, and that one, same thing, but just just had a big old logo on it. It's a little bit difficult, but. It was done. It's done. Good job. Oh, it man. looks awesome. Good. That is insane. Thank it looks you. really Wow. Good. I am very, very surprised. Yeah, I had no idea what it was going to look like. Shane's been hiding it from me. And uh, this is a very big surprise. So thank you, man. Thank you for doing a great job. Appreciate that. back and the last thing that is a huge huge surprise for me that I haven't seen yet Amy is gonna explain what it is and then we're gonna look at all the other yeah so we are in final finish right now and typically this is the area where we do that we finish the boat off so we're gonna QC it for the final time we're gonna add the gator step it's already gonna have the tower and in this case it has a really really special tower that is also gonna be very similar to the tower going on your boat and it's called the Predator Power Tower it's by Roswell and it is all new and the biggest factor with this particular tower is it goes up and down with a nine-foot bimini that's rigid parallel to the floor 
and you can sit under it to drive when it's at its lowest point. Oh god, you, so you know, can go under a bridge. You can get shelter from the rain or the sun. Uh, it you, is legit. Usually, what you have to do on on all the boats is manually lower the tower, and you gotta like articulate it. And it's it's a few different ways to do it. This one, you hit one button, and the whole thing just lowers. So it's, I'm gonna look at it for the first time. I've seen some pictures, but now I'm excited. <laughs> the road at 60 miles an hour 80 miles an hour with with it up yeah. it doesn't come off yeah. yeah that is a game changer that's awesome this is a game changer the boat obviously has a lot of stages to go until it's done but at this point i am so glad to show you guys what this whole process has been i learned a lot as well as hopefully you guys you know enjoyed kind of what we saw as well the boat we're getting is going to be absolutely next level, and it is just awesome to work with a company like Centurion. And uh, they, they've actually been excited with us, and that's that's a very different thing because usually when you work with a massive manufacturer, uh, a lot of the times they, it's like a one-sided type thing. So anyway, if you guys are watching, thank you so much for just seeing what what we did here today, and you guys have a blessed day. Until next time, because next time you guys are going to want to watch the boat. Oh man, I wish I could show you the designs on this phone. The boat is gonna show up fully wrapped. So it's leaving this facility, not only done, fully wrapped. And we're gonna see it in North Carolina 100% done. And with all the beautiful stitching and everything, until next time, boys.